Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate, and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. So I want to talk to you a little bit about being a light worker or identifying as a light worker or someone, one of the chosen people, 144,000, um, a star seed. However you might um, identify, I want to bring a, an idea to you that might help understand sometimes our very strained and strange relationships that we have with family and friends, why we can have intense connections with so-called strangers that are very bizarre and real hostile or real, you know, super I love them instantly, things that have some very, um, by normal standards, seem very out there, or we have family members that we cannot seem to get away from or that we have a real instant, you know, hate for from birth on, those kinds of things that don't fit the traditional what average human being life here on earth is about, that other people in our circle really don't quite understand that, and, and um, we can feel very bizarre because we have these very very strained and strange relationships sometimes. So let me offer you, Dolores Cannon um, gave a lot of information about Starseed. She's the one that talked about the waves of volunteers that come from other star systems and do not carry Akashic Records um, the same way that people who are rotating in lifetimes here on Earth do. Um, not better, not worse, just different. That people who are here repeating lifetime after lifetime to learn certain things, get their karmic lessons done, etc. They have a very planned out procedure for doing that when they get here. This is her philosophy. Um, and many other people you know, hold this true as well that people who have Akashic Records and have lifetimes here on this planet, um, they've already come already with the um, design in mind of where they're going to go, what they're going to do, the kind of work that they're going to um, continue working on or continue to fix or whatever it is as far as karma goes, dharma goes, etc. So light workers, however, are coming to help raise the vibration of this planet and to help people reach a new state of being within themselves to awaken and to work on their own enlightenment and work through those karmic baggages and the karmic blockages and things such as that. Oftentimes light workers are born into families that are disastrous, <laughs> that have very heavy timelines and a lot of karmic debt. Um, in my own personal experience, turning away from Dolores Cannon now, this is just Kate <laughs> and Kate's experience talking to other people that are also light workers and growing up and being one myself and having to identify as, as that eventually because I just didn't fit in anywhere else. It made sense to me and as I continued to work on my spiritual journey, I started getting downloads that made a whole lot more sense in explaining how did I get born into this nonsense? How did I, you know, come from this family? I'm nothing like them. You know, are you sure I'm not adopted? I mean, I, I wondered for a very long time, like somebody's not telling me something highly important about who my mother really is or who my father really is because these people really can't be related to me. I really can't be the same. Who, where's the milkman that left me behind, you know? Um, and so, I deal with it is we often feel like we literally aren't at home ever even when we're with family or we find people that we feel more comfortable with you know we can go years and feel like we just don't belong we look up into the stars and we think my home's out there somewhere I just want to go home I'm lonely I want to go home I want to go home and always feeling that sense at least me anyway always feeling that sense of agitation and irritation and anxiety that I don't feel completely safe I don't feel completely safe and after I got to be an adult I began to feel safer. <laughs> I did. And I think, you know, there are many star seeds and light workers that do feel safer. And yet we still have that yearning for home because we really are from way out of town, you know, and, and things don't look, you know, that deja vu thing does not happen. It has not ever happened for me on earth that I had some experience that I went to a new place or I went to a place and went, hey, deja vu, I've been here before. Um, it was a memory from being in this lifetime that I'd been somewhere before. However, no deja vu kind of stuck for me um, because it doesn't apply. I always felt like I was seeing it for the first time and nobody ever understood me. It's like, well, of course you've never seen New York for the first time you've never been here, or you've never seen Colorado for the first time you've never been here. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is the first, first time, you know? Um, and that made more sense to me when I got the download that it's because you've never been here before. This is your first time on earth. You don't have any history here. And we go um, to the Akashic records or cosmic records, you know, and get what Dolores Cannon calls them imprinting. Um, I described it a little bit different in a video I made a while ago, but it's the same idea that, you know, like getting a briefing um, when I was a paramedic, um, I would go 
we would get a, a little brief before we were headed to a call that, hey, you're going to a 58-year-old 58, 58 man with a history of heart disease, blah, 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 has chest pain, been on the ground for three minutes, you know, go, and that was it. And then we gathered intelligence while we were on the scene, while somebody got to work, you know, on fixing the problem. The other person worked on getting information from the surrounding family members or witnesses or whatever, and, you know, it went on from there. And that's how I described it in my video. It's very similar to what she is saying is that, light workers go to um, the Akashic Records and they're imprinted with information of people um, or situations that are here on Earth or have been on Earth, um, themes, etc., so that we're not exactly carrying the um, Akashic Record baggage the same way. We've got the information, we've got the pre-brief, and then we get we land on the ground and here we go, here's your cardiac patient on the ground, 58-year-old man with history of blah, 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 and there you go. With your skills, you're going to have to gain the information from the people on the ground, the witnesses, to know what you're going to do and how you're going to use your skills, your talents, and your abilities. And it's going to have to be in that flow state from there about how that um, goes as to whether you save the patient or not, or how you um, can handle that emergency, if you will. So, pardon me. <laughs> Sorry. Every time I start. <laughs> Every time I start. So, um, the deal is, though, because of that, we don't have those records the same way. We're blocked into families. Pardon me, let me put this right where it is. For me personally, this is how it works. And I know I've talked to other people that they have felt the same way. However, they're not here being interviewed. It's just me. So um, I was put into a family where I never identified with anybody in my fam family except for my grandfather. And my grandfather passed away when I was eight years old, my maternal grandfather. Um, he was not considered to be a good man. He was a, a alcoholic and had a lot of problems, you know, um, and my grandparents were technically married, but they didn't live together. So I did not spend a whole lot of time before I was eight year old, eight years old that I can consciously remember um, that I spent a lot of time with him. I did not. Um, we lived with him briefly for some period of time whenever I was a, a child, uh, excuse me, a baby um, up to, you know, young toddler. Um, beyond that, though, those were the lean years of, yeah, I've got, you know, maybe a handful of memories of him. And I connected with him and I knew that I really loved him and that I was very um, special to him and that he was special to me. But he was an alcoholic and he wasn't spoken of highly when he wasn't in the room, unfortunately, by anyone, including and especially my grandmother and my mother, um, which I always thought was really weird because he had a twinkle in his eye that I just identified with and I thought to myself, he's family. He knows me, he gets me, he sees me, he knows who I am. And I never really thought about that. You know, at the time, it didn't seem weird. I was eight years old when he passed away. And then five years ago, six years ago, I was going through a divorce and I started seeing images of him again, except he was um, nowhere near what he looked like in person. He was very cleaned up and he looked like my grandpa would have if he was, you know, in a very good state of being. And he was quite young when he passed away. He was in his early 50s, so <laughs> he wasn't an old man. Um, but when I started seeing him, and and kind of talking to that and realizing that oh my goodness he's not you know um, this is him skinless him this is him in the spirit realm this isn't you know just a memory of him because I never saw him like that that he was telling me that yeah I am your grandfather here on earth however you know we have long-standing history elsewhere that is um, belongs to different energy than the energy that you were born into and I did see you you are who um, you thought you were back then you are you were then who you are now to me and I am that to you and it doesn't matter whether or not I was here on earth with you I saw you and I've been riding with you ever since um, that kind of blew my mind because I really never thought much of my grandfather um, consciously I did quite a bit for a man that you know died in when I was eight and I didn't have a close connection to I always knew that he was the only person in my whole entire life that his eyes twinkled at me the way they did and that he saw me I always felt like he saw me he saw me he knows who I am. I never felt that way about anybody ever again after that. And it was a deep knowing that he saw me for who I am, but I didn't really understand that. And then five years ago or so, I went, oh my God, now I get it. He knows who I am and that I know who he is because we come from a similar place in cosmology and some star system wherever you know that is not from earth etc and so um, part of the deal though is that when we're blocked into these families um, and we feel so alienated and so alien and abandoned and treated very badly you know um, light workers in these family dynamics and these family systems we're generally not born into healthy places we're not born into places where they you know need uh, don't need light you know we're not born into lighthouses we're born into caves and very dark caverns 
cavernous places where people are doing some nasty stuff, you know, um, very frequently. As a matter of fact, I've never known a light worker or someone who identified as a high level energy worker that had, you know, the cush life, that didn't have trauma, that didn't have baggage, that didn't have terrible relationships with either their parents or their caregivers or siblings, et cetera. They have had very, very harsh backgrounds, and that is true for me too. And I used to think, you know, why does my father hate me? Why does my mother hate me? Why does my sister hate me? Why is this? You know, why do these people hate me? What have I done to them? You know, that if they would just stop being mean, you know, I wouldn't have to, you know, feel so terrified and I wouldn't, you know, really be disliking them back. You know, I only dislike them because they're scary I don't dislike them for who they are and yet they hate me they hate me for who I am you know and then I was told that I was just paranoid and you know you think everybody's persecuting you etc and so that's part of the falsehood with light workers is that people really do hate us you know or they they are really hating themselves they can't identify what that light is they can't understand that that that's a different vibration that you know they're not there and they don't understand it and those things that we don't understand as humans you know we tend to not like it we're afraid of it and humans don't like feeling afraid that's one of the biggest um, things that would get a human out of pocket in a second is to be afraid of something and depending on how afraid they are is oftentimes the extent to which they're willing to lose their mind and go sideways with it and so when you're dealing with these little bubbles and you know lights and all this these these characters from out of town you know these star seeds and light workers who are just joyous and happy and do to do to do you know um we can seem like the antithesis we can seem fake we can seem disingenuous we can seem like we're ridic ridiculous you know we're oftentimes um very very different from the norm we can be real rabble rousers and we can really be breaking rules and stuff but really having a good time while we're doing it and it can look like life is easy that we always get what we want and what people don't really see is that there's a cost for doing business no matter what we're doing here on earth whether we're a light worker or not and so even though it, I've been a rabble rouser my whole life I've had to pay for being the outsider I've had to you know live with the notion that I wasn't well liked you know in a crowd I never fit in anywhere and for the most part I'd say I'm heavily suited up for the game because most of the time I didn't care however I am a human being you know so it's not like we come here and we get to transcend being a human being we come here and we're in this avatar are, and our bodies are very um, neurologically wired differently, at least mine is, and a bunch of other people I know that identify as light workers are. Um, doesn't mean though that we, we don't have an ego. It means it's easier sometimes, very often, for us to transcend that ego. However, we do still have feelings and we just still have to work over the fact that, or work out the fact that know siblings can't stand us or out for blood or our parents you know act weird towards us or abandon us or harm us or that we've been traumatized by people who had no business being anywhere near us and so part of being able to help the human collective us included you know as humans is to be able to raise the vibration with understanding with compassion with kindness forgiveness and transcending the ego and showing other people how that gets done that even when we as light workers we're not you know without fault or guilt or any of that we are not it's that when we make a mistake when we choose badly when we choose to cause harm or even we ignorantly choose harm however it is that we choose you know not well it is to show that and demonstrate that this is how we move on from this this is how we pick up without running fearfully without being angry that we have been called out without getting involved in our ego battle and our ego dance and without wanting to harm another person to deflect all the pain from us we're generally pretty big you know impasse i mean i don't know any light worker that is in an impasse but we can have you know empathic abilities that makes it really hard to be around other people and not pick up all of the stuff that they're feeling and so it isn't a matter that we don't have the ability to feel as a matter of fact it's more likely that we're going to go the other way and take on way too many feelings so that when we finally do wake up all the way and we realize our mission we know what we're about i'm from out of town i don't have all the akashic records and all that karmic baggage stuff the same way other than all the crap that i've accumulated this lifetime without understanding all of this exactly um, when we finally catch on to all of that and we start to understand that hey you know my mom was jealous of me and she was mean to me because of what I have what my role is in this family dynamic what my role is in that timeline what my role is in that bloodline what my role is in the genealogy going back for however many thousands of years hundreds of years days whatever it is you know we're here to break up themes we're here to break up karmic baggage from an entire host of different places and in different ways um, on different levels of energy so 
we think about light workers in a different way, at least for myself, whenever I could look at it and say, you know, it's okay that people have not liked me. It's okay that I didn't bond with my own mother. It's okay that I didn't know my, my biological father and that my sibling is, you know, just not cool with me and that we're not, we're not having that, you know, relationship. We just don't and we never have and it's okay. It made it a whole lot easier for me to understand that I wasn't here to do that that way. I was here to break up a very bad system. I was here to break up a timeline that had a lot of karmic baggage associated with it and a whole lot of debt for doing stuff that, no, no, we're not allowed to do that. We are not allowed to enslave people's bodies, minds, or their souls, their money, their sexuality, their anything. We are not as human beings given latitude to do that. And so these timelines where there was all that kind of karmic debt and all of that kind of need to get out of the dark, that's oftentimes where light workers are placed. It's just that not every light worker that's placed in those places will make it out of there alive, nor will they necessarily make it out at all. That's how you get dark impasses, people who decide, you know, the light worker can't hang or doesn't want to hang or isn't quite lit all the way, whatever it is, everybody has free will. No matter what star system we come from, no matter how closely rooted to earth we are in our original avatars, it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter what lifetime we're on. There are lots of different stories out there and everybody has free will, so we can always choose. It's just that for light workers, in my humble opinion, it's a lot harder for me to choose to do something devious or dark and really feel okay with it. The guilt and the shame just overwhelms me and just racks my whole entire mind that I'm not really inclined to do things that are ugly or nasty. And I certainly have not ever done some of the things that have been done to me in processes where I was coming out and saying, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I need to separate from this. People get very nasty when they're afraid and when they don't understand something and when they're feeling jealous and hateful about the ability of another person is because they don't have the understanding that you have your own abilities. You know, I don't run. I'm not a particularly talented runner. I never have been and yet I don't hold it against anybody else that is very talented at running. You know, I mean, maybe it could be said that it's because I didn't aspire to be an Olympic runner. However, I did aspire to be a whole lot better um, in math than I was and I just am not you know that's not my skill set and so rather than covet somebody else's abilities or their skills or their husband or their money or their you know stuff or their children or their life or their romance whatever it is rather than covet all of that you know it has served me better to just hone the skills that I do have and I have my very own just like every single person does it's just that I can't spend 17 17 8 8 can't spend a whole lot of time <laughs> zero on making a comparison study that's part of the problem with the human endeavor is that we're very inclined as human beings because of that ego thing to worry how we stack up against somebody else and why i think it's easier for light workers sometimes to not have as many struggles with that until we you know reach a point that we're breaking out and wondering why does everybody hate me why does everybody seem like they're giving me stank face why is this why is that um those are valid questions to ask and the less that we know about what the true story is um, the more we can really get hung up in how could it be that my whole family hates me how could they do this to me you know staying in that very victimized state and it's not that you know I want to glorify being a victim it's that we are victimized because we're placed in those situations where we're highly likely to be victimized because that's the tragedy that we're going in there to kick the shit right out of you know blu-rays if you identify with them the indigos you know that they're we're really um, that's who I identify with the most I don't mean to discount anybody else's story it's just that's the one that I identify with the most is that we are very much supposed to be there to break those systems apart and to say no this is not cool this isn't good you know and when we're supposed to do it how we're supposed to do it and with you know what kind of skill and all that can't say I just know I was about 50 years old before I fully became able to open up my throat chakra and say no this is some crap that I'm not putting up with and no and to admit to myself that I've been watching this ridiculousity for my whole life and that the truth of it is is that I have never had good family connections I've never been close you know to my family of origin and that the per one person I was close to he died very early on because he couldn't hang with it either you know he left too that his beautiful um, sensitive impasse soul couldn't hang and he died probably uh, right about the same age that I am now and now whenever I'm speaking to him and getting downloads and I'm getting other downloads from other um, places 
in the etheric field, I understand better that you aren't coming here to, you know, make one big happy family out of your family of origin. That's not what you are here to do. Um, there are too many people on this planet that are in broken systems and the entire um, human collective is in a web. You know, we're all connected somehow energetically at a minimum and even humanity is connected somehow each person you know six degrees of separation and yet we're all connected somehow you would find a way that a web would connect every single one of us one way or another and in many many areas um, it would duplicate and overlie and overlap so the deal with light workers is not to get hung up on the damage that has been caused to us or even the damage that we've caused especially when we have people trying to guilt trip us about it it's about knowing what the mission is the mission is um, from my perspective you know at least I know I can own that for myself I agree with Dolores Cannon that we're here to you know brighten up the collective we're here to lighten up the collective to bring in um, different energetic understanding and to help people reach their own ability to you know fire it up from inside you've got what you need to inside of you um, not to have the same gifts as me because I don't have the same gifts as you it's not about the comparison study comparative study it's about get in there and heal so that we can fix the karmic debt so that you can fix the karmic debt for your life and then I can fix the karmic debt for my life. Let me be clear about that so that we can do that. And truly, as Ram Dass says, you know, walk each other home and realize that we're not all going home to the same exact neighborhood. We're definitely not all going back to the same house. Um, you know, and we don't have to like each other. We have to respect one another and we have to have compassion for one another and forgiveness for one another. However, it's a bumpy road getting there about how to politely knock someone's um, bad ideas about us down in a very polite way. It can get a little get, bit grungy, it can get a little bit, you know, cagey, and it can get downright ugly looking. However, just because we have sustained damage doesn't mean that we have to continue on believing the lie that has been told to us since the beginning um, for many of us early on. But no, the reason that a lot of people don't like us is because we are here to change the old paradigm. And if another thing is true about human beings it's that humans as a whole do not like getting out of their rut they like doing things the same way they like knowing you know what works even if it doesn't really work it's functionally dysfunctional we don't care we just want to go with what we know because the unknown is what scary so I encourage you if you are a light worker if you're identifying with this in some other way but it fits for you then be willing to understand yourself in a brand new dynamic and give yourself a big old pat on the back and a huge hug and please accept my shine because it's not an easy easy mission and it's not an easy road to hoe sometimes however there's great pride um, and I don't mean egotistical pride I mean galactic pride you got a lot of um, energies out there supporting this process and a lot of different energies um, cosmologically here that are celebrating and uh, sending all kinds of parades of you know honor etc for this process that the earth is going through as she continues to move her vi vi vibration up you know and the Schumann resonance continues to rise the human collective continues to rise and we see all around us the destruction of the old way of doing humanity we're not doing that anymore we can look around and see that every institution that ever held some powerful position it's being pretty much knocked down at least a, on a tiny scale and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and we definitely Definitely see huge governmental stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, huge um, social things, cultural things. We see all kinds of things that are absolutely destroyed all over the place or in the process of being destroyed. And it isn't that I enjoy the fact that people would be harmed in these processes. They are. We're, we're definitely in a battle as things are coming down. However, we can know, no matter how we identify, we can know that it is always for our greatest good, whether we understand it or not, whether we agree with it or not, whether we like it or not, um, is irrelevant. It is always for our highest good because universal intelligence has nothing else except good for us. It is good. It is pure love. So it can have nothing but that for us. And every bit of the energies and the intelligence, both on earth, in earth, around earth, and distant to earth that supports it in any dimensional understanding or any etheric or 3D understanding, whatever understanding you can think of, all of them that are here supporting this process are all here working for the greater good of earth and all of her inhabitants. So I hope that that's uh, something that's been helpful for you today. And I hope that you enjoy your day no matter what part of the day you're in. And remember to get within your skin because you're divine. It is so, 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 so fa fantastic, magical, and absolutely fine. I hope that you will be able to reach inside and be able to 
say thank you to your starseed nation, your star family, your light worker abilities, whatever it is inside of you that you can be knowing that your divine is a very blessed gift to the earth and her uh, habitat, as well as all of the collection of collective of humanity that is here. Even if the people around you aren't willing to send you flowers or say thank you, <laughs> please accept my shine and please accept my thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I thank you um, for being you and for casting your shine everywhere with that you see darkness be the light that you are take care of yourselves and i'll see you again next time goodbye my beautiful friends